All right, so um, last I left you, you were hopefully looking at the customization options of your particular theme, and then it's going to depend on your theme how much you can customize. This is what I was saying a moment ago about a particular theme might give you a lot of ability, or they might uh, lock it down. Maybe they unlock some of those features when you, when you upgrade. It really depends on your theme. There's a robust economy behind WordPress. There are companies and design studios and individuals making a living creating WordPress themes, creating WordPress plugins, just creating stuff that hovers around the WordPress um, ecosystem. And so here I'm looking at the particular customization options of this theme, the Canyon theme. So I haven't looked at these yet, but there's a way for me to set its title and tagline branding. So this seems to be, I can add a fave icon, which is the little icon that appears on the corner of my browser. Right now it's got the default WordPress, or the WAMP server icon. Over at that other site it had that, and at the emoji site it had that. So if I want my own icon, I can upload it there, and my logo. Notice it's using uh, this logo here. So if I want my own logo, I can put it in. That's branding. I've got header. Header seems to be complicated with some general stuff. Lots to turn on and off. The first button. So I can change that to be like an exclusive sale today. So I'm just showing you for this particular theme. I'm, I'm, I've, this is the first time I've seen it and I'm kind of liking it. It's got a lot of customization, a lot of uh, features. It might be overwhelming as a beginner, but there's all of these sections where I can put great call to actions, calls to action. I can put sub-menu items here. Look, this is where I'm going to put my icons for social media. I have to figure out where do I edit that, but it's going to be somewhere in the customization. Um, let's see, header, breadcrumbs, colors, widgets, static front page, background image, navigation. Your theme supports one menu, so okay background image, others... Oh, I can put in my own custom CSS, and there's the text down there. Instead of it saying powered by WordPress, I can make it say my name. So, depending on your theme, it could be as easy as editing the customization options to get rid of that proudly powered by WordPress, or it could be other, other parts to edit the code. Okay, let me change that message about WordPress, but it still says designed by mytheme.es. I could most likely still change that through code, which we'll get to, but right now you should just explore what customization options do you have on your theme. And if you do make any changes, remember to click Save and Publish. How many of you have very little amount of customization in your theme, relatively? Well, hopefully you chose a theme that does let you customize things. You, you'd rather have more customization ability than less, because when you really want to change something and you can't, that's annoying. You may never edit any of these things over here, but if you have them, you might use them later. Oh, here's the social section. So I can add this one. This one seems to have a list of, of possible social networks, and then you fill it in. So if a particular network is not visible here, you can't add it. This is what I'm saying. Depending on the theme author, what can you, what can you edit? So it's got a bunch of them. SoundCloud, Dribbble, Instagram, etc. Question? What was that called again, that little icon? That's the fave-icon. F-A-V-I-C-O-N. Question? Definitely. Um, you 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 look at your ladies, ladies. You're you're interrupting a bit. You look at the. You look at the theme options, you read the description. The theme author oftentimes is going to put out a suite of themes that work best on a, on a topic or a niche. So really the author, I would trust the author to say, this is best for a blog, this is best for e-commerce, this is best for fashion. 
So it's not like what features would I look for in a blog, it's like what do the features of this author give me? And then if they coexist with what I'm trying to do online with my site or e-commerce site, then I, then I download it. But I definitely want to, to read the documentation, uh, check the author's website, and you should be able to find that when you click on the view details of the theme. So a little digression here. We can go to appearance and, and, and search for themes. There were 2,000 of them in here, but if I found Canyon, at least one other person in this room also got Canyon. So my site might look the same as your site. Maybe I can customize it enough that it doesn't look like your site, but you're going to see 2,000 themes might still be too limited. So what you've got also is the ability to search. You can put in keywords like fashion. What if I'm looking for a fashion centric um, a fashion centric theme? So right here, Divina and Fashionistas and Publication. These might work well for my fashion type of site. I got 14 results. Well, if I got one of these results and WordPress is global, and it powers one quarter of the websites of the world, maybe someone else got one of those 14. So the other option, we've got featured popular latest search. We've also got upload, because I can do a search on Bing, on Google, on Yahoo, top fashion themes, top WordPress fashion themes 2015. And I'm sure there's going to be plenty of blog posts of people curating these results. Let me do that right now. I'm going to open search engine, doesn't matter, and I'm going to search for top fashion WordPress themes 2015. 15 of the best fashion WordPress themes 2015, 25 amazing WordPress fashion themes, fashion free WordPress themes, 45 of them. So the point here is I'm going to do a search on a search engine. I'm going to find a result somewhere. I, uh, however the website lets you do it, you're going to download the theme and then on WordPress you've got upload the theme. So you don't have to get a theme just from the built-in marketplace. You can search the whole web, find the perfect theme, and upload it and use it. And so if it's a free theme, you might not get a lot of great features, customization, or tech support. If it's a premium theme, you will probably get a lot of great features, customization, and tech support. And in the middle, freemium, you get a little bit of both. Maybe for free, not a lot of tech support, but good features. And then you pay that extra 20 or 30 or whatever dollars, and that theme gets upgraded to premium, and now you've got all of the tech support that you need because I can't get my theme to look exactly like the demo version. Well, the author will gladly help you. That's why you're paying the premium or freemium prices. And my company does this all the time because I'm going to tell you right here that when a company hires my company, we have basically three options to design a website for them. We have the option where we search with the author and we tell them, we're going to design you a WordPress theme and these are the three options and here's option one. Let's search through these, through these possible themes here or maybe upload a theme and we'll use it as, as is mostly maybe some customization. That's the first level. Use a theme pretty much as is, minimal customization. The second level is, again, we might start with a, with a theme that's already pretty well designed, customize it a bit here, and then we go to the power editor, where all the raw code is. We'll look at this more in detail, but under appearance editor, here's all of the code of your site. So if this scares you, don't look here. But if you know some experience in, in a little bit of programming, you will be able to fully customize that theme. It's like getting that old beat-up car, working on it, making it cherry again, and now you've got a classic. It's like buying that fixer-upper house because of its location and its structure and all of that, and fixing it up, and now you've got a million-dollar house. We can take an existing theme, customize it because it's got all the layout that I want, the, the, the features that I want, but we need to customize it to, to get that little last, last bit of panache out of it. That's level two. 
The third level is we build them a site from scratch. We write all of this code from the beginning, from scratch, fully customized. There's no other website that looks like it in the world. But those three levels increase in complexity, time to develop, and price. So we tell, uh, we tell a prospective client, those are the three levels, but even we tell them, we don't recommend the third level. You're going to pay a lot to get a custom website that you don't really need so, so customized. The second level really is the one where we sell to the prospective client, and sometimes we do the basic one if they've got a really tight budget, you know, only like a thousand dollars. But if you're going up for much more complexity, e-commerce and all of that, usually we're starting with a three thousand dollar site or so, and that price includes the, the, the buying and customization of the theme. Then we're talking five or ten thousand dollars to do a completely customized site because that's a lot of code. HTML language, CSS language, JavaScript language, PHP language, four huge programming languages to get a site working from scratch. And that's why we, we don't even recommend. It's great for us, we'll get paid more, but we don't recommend that to the client. We don't we say save your money. Let's go look at a premium theme. It might cost you sixty dollars, but a part of our whole development process will be to customize that exactly how you want. And it's worked out. All the examples that I show in, in my classes of real clients are, have been that way. We find a theme together with the client, and we customize it. Usually requires getting into the code, getting to tech support, um, sleepless nights to figure out why is get template part CFG not working, and then we get it to work, and then it's they've got a great site. And so themes are a whole new world to look at, and they can be free, paid, freemium, multiple levels of customization. So I'm going to shift gears in, in a moment. We're getting close to the end of the day, but any questions so far on anything we've talked about all day? Um, where do you think that came from a person to uh, person in this stuff? I already closed the window, but that one was, I just did a, a search on bing.com and it was one of the top results, I think. Any other general questions? All right, so. And can we add an installer to the. Yes, so let's say you've got one of these themes. Let's say I'm never going to use 2013. You can always go to theme details and you will see delete. And that's actually a good point because we can have 20 themes installed but only one active. However, all 20 of those themes are still going to take up resources. They're going to take up hard drive space on your provider and they're going to take up bandwidth which means they are going to be connecting to the internet because as, we, as we'll see WordPress has updates, the software is always in, improving, and these themes that I don't even have active that I'm never going to use are requesting updates are connecting to wordpress.org and checking is there a new version tomorrow is there a new version tomorrow is there a new version so these three themes that I'm never going to use are going to use my are going to use up my resources so it's a good idea to really only have the one theme that you need and one basic backup theme in case something happens to your main theme and you need to put in a basic theme to get the site up and running again so I, I would delete these two and keep canyon and 2015 same goes were same goes with plugins and other things, which we'll get to plugins later. Question? Like I said a moment ago, like I said a moment ago, when you go to your themes here and click theme details, you will see delete right there. You might not have activated it. You have to remember to activate it. If it's not the first theme in this grid, if it doesn't say active, then it's not active. No. So you want to hover over the theme and then click activate. All right, let's say, uh, well, today we've accomplished some things. We've learned about pages and posts, themes. Uh, menus and such. There's still more to learn, of course. But when we come back next week, I don't want to start over. I like this theme and I made some changes and such. I don't want to start over. 
So I'm going to go now over to sheet number four, and let's talk about the concepts in sheet number four. Sheet number four is the archiving WordPress with duplicator. Um, there's no easy or elegant built-in backup feature in WordPress. They left it to, to, to third-party developers to create them. So your site that, if I've got victor.com and it's a WordPress site, it's live on the internet. If my site crashes and I don't have a backup somewhere, it's crashed. I don't have a copy like Let's say if I was making a site in Word in Dreamweaver. In Dreamweaver, I've got a copy on my hard drive and on the server. In WordPress, it's on the server, unless I explicitly made a copy. This is how to make a copy. We're going to use something called a plugin, a specific plugin called Duplicator. So overall, the concept is together, we're going to download a plugin that makes a perfect copy of your site. Every picture, every text, every entry in the database. And all of those things are going to be compressed down to two files. One big zip file and one installation file. When we come back next time, we're going to use the installation file to unzip the zip file and bring our site back to life. If you want to do this at home, even better. You can get practice with this. We are going to make a, an archive of our site, and then next week we'll resurrect it. We'll, we'll bring it back to life. We'll redeploy it. That's what sheet number four is talking about. The first step that we'll do here is to make the archive. So on your WordPress, we'll talk more in detail about plugins, but hover over plugins and select add new. Plugins are mini apps that add extra features to WordPress, such as the ability to archive to back up your site. So hover over Plugins and select Add New. Um, on the right, on, uh, near the top right, you will see Search Plugins. And according to my instructions, we're going to search for a plugin called Duplicator. So type the word Duplicator and press Enter. And you'll get a variety of results, which is the right one. Well, it's the one that I'm mentioning in my sheet, but uh, it's the one from this company because these are these are plugins and, and themes are are from other companies oftentimes besides WordPress. So this one is from the company Life in the Grid. I've used it for years. I really like it. It makes perfect copies of your site. The purpose of this is then I've got my site let's say on GoDaddy but I want to move it over to Bluehost well I need to make a copy of my WordPress site from GoDaddy get my new Bluehost account and upload my archive to Bluehost for us we're gonna make a copy of our of our site with duplicator we're gonna take that file with us if you brought a flash drive and then when we come back next time we will bring our site back to life it has over half a million installations perfect five stars, 902 reviews. Very few other plugins are going to boast that. Okay, perfect five stars, two reviews. Perfect five stars, four reviews. So that was obviously the author, his mom, and his brothers. <laughs> so none of these that I'm seeing here, this is, has not even been reviewed. So 900 reviews, nearly a thousand reviews nearly half a million installations. That's got 10,000 10, installations. That's good. Four stars out of five. That's still really good. This one appears to, I've never used it, but it appears to make a perfect backup of your site and save it to your Dropbox. Sounds useful. I might want to check it out. But for the moment, the one we want should be the first one. It's got these little bubble icons. Uh, it's compatible with our version of WordPress, updated two weeks ago. What could also be a problem is that we have a five-star app or a plugin, but it hasn't been updated in a year, let's say. So if it hasn't been updated in a year, maybe it actually has security vulnerabilities. 
If it hasn't been updated in a year, maybe it's not compatible with my version of WordPress. So we'll talk about all of these details and nuances of plugins, but for the moment, I want the duplicator plugin. Click Install Now. This is going to be like installing a, a theme in that it will connect, unpack, install. And what did we need to do? Activate. We also can have 20 plugins and only a few of them active. We can have multiple plugins active unlike a theme, but like a theme, if I've got 20 of them and I'm only using two of them, those other 18 of them are still taking up your resources. They're eating up your bandwidth and hard drive space and everything. So activate. While that activates, let's see my instructions. Search for duplicator, install it, make sure you activate it. Now you now have a dashboard item duplicator. So do you see a brand new menu item here? Duplicator. Let's click it. So these are extra features. Go to Duplicator. My instructions say, OK. Click on the Create New tab at the top. At the top right, Create New. We want to create a new package, a new backup. So on the right side, do you see Create New? Click Create New. Most of these settings you can leave alone. You'll get great results. The first setting here is a name. I would recommend leave this name because if you have more than one archive, they will organize themselves alphabetically. And notice the way the date is. Most of the time, most of us are used to writing the date, for example, 9-21-15. That's not a good way to write the date. That's not a good computer-friendly way, because if you organize your files, the computer will put all the Septembers together, all the Octobers together, right, the first number, and it could put the September of 2015 next to the September of 2014. If we organize it in dates like this, year, month, date, that's better for organization, because all 2015 files will be organized together and then all September files, and then all files of today. This one is going to be a big mess, because it goes organized by this, then this, and this. Here it's organized by year, then month, and date. And that one's actually internationally recognized. It is. It is. And I recommend it. I prefer it. I use it. So I recommend the international way. And sometimes the US is very, um, what's the term for not following along? <laughs> There's a term for it. Iconoclastic. The US is sometimes iconoclastic in that we hate the metric system and all of that stuff, but the metric system is good, and so is international dates. You can do whatever you want here, but I recommend these dates. Question in the back? Yes. Uh, what you need to do the for in the Mm -hmm. Yes, so we do this uh, for our clients. We've got their site live on the internet, we make a duplicator archive of it, we download it, we play with it in, um, in WAMP. Once it's perfect, then we can re-upload it, re re resurrect it, and it's live. So the, the work in progress is never visible to the user because we've got it on a local device, a local installation. And we'll link to that. Yes, we'll do that next time, and it's the second part of Sheet 4. Okay, so in my notes, I mentioned that you can also add a note here on the right side where it says Notes. This is totally optional, but if you add a note here, this is useful to make yourself a note about what's in this archive. Because again, if I make a backup once a month, or so I'm not going to remember what was what was in that backup at that moment. So let's say some notes here. Added one post and page, changed theme, <clears throat> pending, uh, WordPress updates. Any notes here will that will help you are fine.
Um, we don't have to make any of these other changes, so just click Next. This is going to check your server to see if there's any problems. Usually there are no problems. You might get a, you might, the, uh, the possibilities are good, warning, and error. If everything is good, then you're ready to proceed. If you get a warning, you can still proceed. It might cause problems, but you can still proceed. And if you get an error, you cannot proceed. It won't let you proceed. So possibilities in warnings or errors usually are not on the server, usually they're on your site. And usually what I see is a total size. If your site, I think it tells you somewhere here, if your site is, is more than 150 megabytes in total, that might cause problems on your particular server. Maybe your Bluehost or your GoDaddy or HostMonster or whatever, depending on the version you bought, you know, if you buy the cheapest, cheapest server, maybe 150 megabyte site is hard to archive. Maybe the WordPress duplicator will fail. You don't know until you try it. So it's, it's a warning, actually, right? Uh, maybe if you pay a little bit more for higher levels of service on GoDaddy and such, you won't have a problem. I don't have a problem here yet. A couple of times with clients, we have gotten the warning that the site is 180 megabytes. I do proceed anyway, and it works. I can't always guarantee what will happen. Just it comes from experience. Yeah. So once we did get a warning, do I go back and enable filters or don't worry about it? You got a warning right now? Uh, we might have to look during the break because I, when you say enable filters, there's a bunch of filters that we can activate. We don't know which one to work with yet. So let's wait during the break or let's proceed if it's just a warning. If it's an error, we have to do something about it. But if it's a warning, we'll be <coughs> probably okay. So this will tell you if your names are too long. If your names are too long, I think the maximum is 255 characters. If it's longer than that, the name's going to get cut off, you get a warning. If individual files are too big, individual is 3 megabytes. So if you're throwing in your photo from your digital camera straight from your digital camera, and you put in 20 of those, you can have a very large total size, very large file size. This warning will probably be really serious. Question? The names of your graphics, usually, the names of, yeah, file names, the names of your files, even the names of like your titles of your pages. So if your page is named something like how to update your WordPress site and not lose your files, part one, you know, a really long title, that could also be affected here. Everything seems to be good, so let's click build. outside and then you do this again like is there a limit to how many times you can do this because you're per constantly creating new files or taking up server space that sort of is a catch-22 you can build as many backups as you want but each backup takes up space and I don't believe each new backup is added to the old backup at least because if it did that'd be bad you know a backup inside of a backup inside of a backup so I don't believe we have to worry about backups inside of a backup but yes, every time you make a backup, it's getting saved on your server. And right now, this is compressed down to 11 megabytes. So every time I do this, I might get 11 more megabytes, 11 more, 11 more, and I am eating up my code space. So over time, can you delete older ones if you need to? Definitely. I think a little mo moment ago, my, it said that my site was about 25 megabytes. I ran through this process, and now it says that my site has been archived down to 11 megabytes. So it still compresses it pretty well. And now what I have here is a copy, a perfect copy of my site on the server, the virtual server. I could do this on GoDaddy, Bluehost, etc. Well, it's still on the server. What if the server burns down? Here's the last step in my instructions. After the build is complete, you will get two files, an installer file and an archive. Click to download the installer and the archive file. One is called, you'll get one called installer.php that contains the instructions to resurrect your site, and the other might be called with a really long name, .zip, and contains all your media, pages, posts, databases, everything. Do not unzip this file. 
So you want to click the installer button and it should somehow, depending on your web browser, either automatically download it or ask you what to do with it. You want to save the file. There's no reason to open this installer.php file or the archive.zip file. There's no reason for us to edit or open in them until we come back next week when we use them to bring our site back to life. So this is asking me to save it. Question. Is this the moment when you can save it to your yes. flash drive? Yes. So if you haven't plugged in your flash drive, you can. Um, or if you don't have a flash drive today, you can save it to the desktop. But remember, when you t turn off the computers, everything gets erased. So I'm going to save a copy of my site in the network folder where it's safe. You guys don't, don't have access to save to the network. But I'm going to save my site to the network when we come back next time. If you don't have a copy of your site, we can use my site. So if I save it, to, if I save it out, if I just press OK, and then it will open up another window so I can direct you. Direct it's it's going to depend on the web browser. On Firefox, I'm going to click OK, and it automatically saved to the desktop. So if it pops up with another window of where to save, definitely choose your flash drive. If it doesn't give you where to save, most likely it's saved to the desktop. And that's okay. Then we just drag it from the desktop to your flash drive. Questions? Yes. So the, uh, the two files that we're taking home today is the installer.php and the archive.php, is that Yes. Th these are the two files we're taking home, installer.php and archive.zip. Those are the two that we're taking with us. So everyone, I know you're helping each other, but let's keep it down for a moment. I'm still doing the lecture. Um, I'm going to click Archive, and that's going to say again, what do you want to do, open it or save it? We're going to save it. And on mine, it seems to automatically save to the desktop. If I go to the desktop, there it is. Installer.php and 2015 blah 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 dot zip. These two files I need to take with me. I need to put them on my flash drive or I need to put them somewhere. I just need to count desks real quick. No problem. So I've downloaded these two. I'm going to put in my flash drive and I'm going to save them to, to a folder. I want to keep it on a folder on my flash drive and that'll give me a perfect copy of my site up to this point. So let's say I have my flash drive plugged in. I'm going to create a new folder. I recommend putting these into folders. I'm going to make a folder with today's date, 2015-09-21. It doesn't do this for you. I made a folder on my flash drive. And then these two files that I downloaded, the PHP file and the zip file, I'm going to move them into that folder and then that folder to my flash drive. The point is that your site is those two files, and if you want to do your site again next week, you need those two files. If you were not able to save your files, no problem. You can use my site next week. I'm going to put my site in the network folder, and if you want a copy of it right now to take with you, great, it's in the network folder. When we come back next time, we're either going to use your site to resurrect it, and we'll do that together, or we'll use my site and resurrect it and keep going. I don't want to start over again. That's right. Yes. The zip file and the one that says installer.php. You want them both. So this is pretty technical, unfortunately. Uh, but again, I said that on the first day that, that this is necessary in these public labs because I'm in this room five days a week. I'm teaching a variety of classes, and if your site were saved on the desktop, someone could mess with it. So these computers reset every time we turn them off. It loses everything. So hopefully right now you made a copy of your site, and when we come back next time, we'll bring your site back to life. So we're getting close to the end of the day. We've got about 10 minutes lab time. Um, we're going to end the main lecture. If you need any help, call me over. I'll turn the printer back on if you still need it. And when we come back next time, we will keep going.